Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recently released Fedora 37. Fedora is one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions and this is the long awaited release of Fedora 37 and I say it's long awaited is because the release date for Fedora 37 got pushed back a little bit and for those of you that are kind of new to Linux and how these releases work you really have two camps of Linux distributions. You have those groups of Linux distributions that typically they set a release date and they always meet it. They always release on the date they say, no matter what, they're releasing on that date that they set six months ago, a year ago, whatever it happens to be. You have another group of Linux distributions that they set release dates, but those release dates are tentative, if you will, right? They're more suggestions. That's not really a hard, fast release date, right? It's we may release on that date, but we probably won't. And Fedora is in that second camp, right? Fedora almost never releases on the actual release date. They always push back their releases. So this is not unusual for Fedora, but I've downloaded the ISO for Fedora Workstation 37, and I'm going to run through a quick installation and first look inside a virtual machine. So I downloaded the ISO for Fedora Workstation 37. The ISO is just under two gigs in size. And I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and boot directly into the live environment. I'm going to run through an installation. All right, and we are in our live GNOME desktop here. Let's go ahead and get into the desktop here. And we have the option here for the installer. We can try Fedora, meaning close out the installer and just play around in the live GNOME desktop, right? Or we can install to hard drive, actually run through a proper installation. And I'm gonna go ahead and run through the installer. So the first screen of the installer is asking about the language, and this is the language to be used during the installation process you know, for the installer. The default language is English. That's fine for me. English US, that is correct for me, so I don't need to change anything. Let me move my head. I'm going to click continue, and then we have keyboard, time and date, installation, destination. Now the keyboard is defaulting to English US, so I don't need to change that. And it has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. You can see America slash Chicago. I'm not in Chicago, but Chicago is in the central time zone in the US. So I don't need to change that, but we do need to select a drive to actually install Fedora 2. And this part of the Fedora installer is confusing as hell. I always mess this up. Every time I've ever installed Fedora ever and I'm talking about going back more than a decade right I missed this part up because it, there's one drive in this virtual machine right and it has a checkbox here meaning we've already selected the drive to actually install Fedora 2 I don't actually need to select it but I always think I have to select it because when I click it it, the box turns blue and that actually kind of makes me makes you think hey you selected a drive right but no I actually unselected the drive it was already selected before you know when it had the checkbox if I click it again I get the checkbox although it still stays highlighted blue that's very confusing because a lot of times I uncheck the drive and then click done and of course we're not going to be able to install Fedora until we actually choose a disk to install to. Uh, all of this, do I want to encrypt? No, I'm not going to encrypt this virtual machine installation. I'm just going to click done. And now the only thing I need to do from this point on is click the button here, begin installation. And this portion of the installation will take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be back once this section of the installer has completed. And that portion of the installation has completed. That took mm, three or four minutes. Let me move my head here. And to complete the installation, we need to go ahead and reboot the machine. Click the button that says finish installation and it should automatically reboot for us. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And actually Fedora's installer does not reboot automatically when you click the finish installation button. That's interesting because Pretty much every other installer on Linux does that for you. The Ubiquity installer that Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions typically use automatically reboots for you. The Calamari's installer that so many Linux distributions use automatically reboots the machine for you. I don't know. Fedora, I, I will say this uh, about the installer, and once we actually get into taking a look at Fedora, Fedora, even though it's a pretty popular Linux distribution, it's not that popular as far as desktop Linux users, partly because it is really not the most user-friendly Linux distribution out there. It does make some strange choices, and in some ways it, it can be kind of frustrating to use if you're used to the way other Linux distributions operate. So let me actually go and actually reboot the machine through the menu here. If I go to the session and go to restart, 
and the machine has rebooted and there's still some setup here you see the setup program the installation is really just installing the base system but you will notice during that installation process we never created a user or a password or any of that stuff right so there's still some work to be done so start setup First thing, privacy. Do we want location services turned on? It's turned on automatically, but you could turn it off if you wanted to. Automatic problem reporting, so crash reports. Do you want to automatically send them? By default, it's turned on. You could turn that off if you wanted to. Now, the crash reporting that Linux distributions ask about, I typically leave that turned on because I do want to help these distributions get better. So if sending those automatic crash reports helps, hey, why not? The location services, honestly, I'd probably turn that off for privacy reasons but that's just me. In this case, I'll leave the defaults though. Now the next screen is interesting. Enable third-party repositories. So this was actually something I had planned on doing potentially at the terminal, at the command line. I'm glad I don't have to do that because once again, Fedora doesn't enable non-free repositories by default. There is a repository of non-free software in the RPM Fusion uh, repository that most Fedora users are going to enable anyway. So you definitely want to enable the RPM Fusion repository. Also, Flatpak, although it's installed out of the box on Fedora, meaning that flat packs you can install flat packs there's it's not connected to a repository of software such as flathub so you have to enable the flathub repository if you want to install from Flathub. So let's enable these third-party repositories. Now clicking the button to enable those third-party repositories, it doesn't tell me what repositories it enabled. It doesn't tell me if it enabled RPM Fusion. I don't know. It doesn't tell me if it enabled Flathub. I don't know. Uh, so that again, I wish it had a little more information here to actually let me know what and what it enabled there. I'm just going to click next. Connect our online accounts. I'm not going to connect any online accounts. So uh, Google accounts, Nextcloud, Microsoft accounts, all of that stuff. So I'll skip this section. Now we need to create our username and password. So my username is going to be DT and then I'm going to click next. Now let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. So confirm our strong and complicated password and then click next and it says all done. Start using Fedora Linux. All right, welcome to GNOME 3. Do you want to take a tour? No thanks. I've seen GNOME 3 before. First thing I'm going to do is hit the super key to get in the menu system. And I'm going to look for the displays program, the, the display settings, because I need to change the resolution. So the screen resolution here is a little wonky. Let me change to a proper 1920 by 1080. Keep the changes. And now this virtual machine should forever remember that I always want a 1920 by 1080 resolution. So the first thing I will say about Fedora is typically with Fedora you get a very vanilla, very plain GNOME desktop experience, which typically in years past has been a bad experience. But with the recently released versions of GNOME, especially the GNOME 40 series, GNOME has really become a pretty nice desktop environment out of the box. I mean, with really no extensions, you know, it's, this is usable. So I actually quite like, especially this last release, GNOME 43 is really good. Let's take a look at what is installed out of the box here in Fedora 37. So you're going to have your standard GNOME suite of applications such as contacts, weather, clocks, maps, uh, GNOME photos, GNOME videos, yada, yada, yada. One interesting thing to note is text editor. So this was a recent change with the GNOME suite of applications as far as their plain text editor is no longer G edit. The plain text editor is now text editor. And by text editor, I mean that's the actual name of the program now. It's GNOME text dash editor. Like if you're launching it from like a run launcher like D menu or Rofi, or if you're launching it from the command line, GNOME text dash editor. I don't know. G edit was a fine name. I don't know why we needed to change that. That said, the, uh, the GNOME text editor is a, a pretty neat program. Uh, that's not my favorite text editor, but for a plain text editor, it's definitely usable. We do have LibreOffice installed. So we have LibreOffice Impress installed. We have LibreOffice Writer and LibreOffice Calc. Let me open the uh, Writer program. So this would be our word processor. And if I go to help and about LibreOffice, let's see what version we are on. Looks like we are on version 7.4.1.2. I actually was trying to drag this window and I ended up dragging way too much. All right, so that is LibreOffice Writer. 
And getting back in the menu here, there's really not much else installed. It's, again, just your standard GNOME applications. We have this utilities subcategory here where we have our image viewer and our PDF viewer and things like that. But uh, again, not a lot installed out of the box. Now, one thing about GNOME that I have always found a little confusing with these recent versions, not all of the installed applications are here in this menu because anything that is pinned in the dock does not appear up here. So Firefox is our browser. It does not appear here because when you pin it to the dock, it disappears from this section of the menu. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Our file manager is also down here. Uh, obviously, that's going to be the Nautilus file manager from GNOME. Now, this release of Fedora came out a couple of days ago. There could be some updates. I wonder if Control-Alt-T would bring up a terminal. No, I didn't think it would. Let me do super and just start typing terminal. Let's open the GNOME terminal. Let me zoom in. Now, typically, I would update the system. I would do something like, well, not sudo apt. I would do sudo dnf update to update the system. And typically, when I do this uh, on a fresh install of Fedora, it always takes a long time. It, you know, I always complain about dnf being kind of slow as far as package management, as far as the download speeds, and partly is the default settings for DNF are just bad. You can actually speed up DNF. I don't know why they don't speed it up for you automatically out of the box, but you can actually edit a config by sudo vim. Uh, the config, I believe, is slash etsy slash DNF slash DNF.conf. Yes. All right. And then give it our sudo password. Vim is not installed. Well, we can take care of that. So so let's do sudo dnf install vim just because I don't want to use the GNOME text editor. Right? I mean, there, there, we could use it, but I'm eventually going to need vim on the system anyway. So let's go ahead and install vim. Vim is not a very big program, but you can see this is taking a, a little bit of time, right? We're having to wait a while, syncing some repositories. Um, Again, it's just a little slow, but once we get Vim installed, we're going to edit this dnf.conf and see if we can speed things up a little bit. And you can see when it's syncing the repositories, we did enable RPM Fusion, so that's good. So that gives us a lot of non-free software, especially proprietary drivers. So if you're like an NVIDIA user, you really need RPM Fusion enabled. So that's good that that was enabled. Now it's telling us the download size. Is this OK? Sure. And this is just really slow. I, I, it probably took a minute and a half to install Vim. And typically Vim installs in like five seconds. I don't know with the Hapt Package Manager or with Pac-Man, you know, other package management systems on Linux. So that's just really, really, really slow. I'm going to up arrow and I'm going to sudo vim slash etsy slash dnf slash dnf dot conf. And what I was looking for is I was looking for a setting here for max parallel downloads and the default dnf.conf does not even have it even like a, as a comment. This is weird. You'd think they'd even have a comment letting people know this is even possible. But what you want to do is go down and at the end here, add max underscore parallel underscore downloads equals and then you want that to equal any value. I think you can go from any value of like three to 20, you know, but I, I think a, a, a good number of parallel downloads is something probably five to 10 is what I would do. Let's just choose five for max parallel downloads here. And then I'm going to escape and colon WQ to write and quit. Actually, I didn't need to write and quit. There was one other thing I wanted to add to the DNF.conf. So one other thing is fastest mirror. That is another setting that, that almost every Fedora user is going to eventually add to this DNF.conf because you're going to get tired of the slow uh, mirrors uh, because, again, that's part of the problem is these mirrors that we're trying to grab software from are slow. Fastest mirror, all one word, equals true with a capital T. Escape, colon WQ to write and quit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the system. I'm going to do a sudo DNF update and see if the update uh, is a little faster. Yeah, and it says, is this download size? OK, so 355 packages. So it already knows the packages that need to be updated. And let's see if these download speeds actually are good. Yeah, you can tell this is moving along much more quickly than what it was doing with that Vim installation earlier. Still 361 packages. It'll take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be back once this system update has completed. 
And those 361 packages updated just fine. There was a kernel update, so uh, typically you'd want to reboot the computer, but I'm going to forego that for now because I want to do a uname-r before I reboot just to see what kernel we were on before we updated because we're still using the old kernel right until I reboot. We're on 6.0.7, so that's what it shipped with, but you can see already they have moved on to 6.0.8. I also want to do a DNF list installed, so let's get a list of all the installed packages. Of course, it spits it out each package on its own separate line. So to get an accurate count, all we need to do is take that output of DNF list installed and pipe it into WC, the word count program, space dash L. The L flag is a line count rather than a word count. So how many lines are in that output? 1,793. So that's how many packages are installed out of the box on Fedora Workstation 37, minus a few packages uh, that I installed personally, such as Vim. One other program I might install if I was a GNOME user, uh, typically you're going to want to install GNOME-Tweak-Tool. So the GNOME Tweak Tool is uh, just a nice settings manager. What it does, it allows you to um, change fonts and, and themes and extensions and things like that. So it's just a nice uh, program that really honestly probably should just be a part of the default GNOME suite of applications to be honest I think pretty much every GNOME user probably installs GNOME tweaks and now that we've done that I'm going to go ahead and close out of the terminal I want to launch the graphical software center so let me search for software we know RPM Fusion, that repository of non-free software, it got enabled. I wonder if Flatpak got enabled when I click the uh, Enable Third Party Repository button. So uh, let me search for something that I know is proprietary software and it would not be in the standard repository, right? So what I need to do is I'm going to search for Discord. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says software needs to be restarted to use these new plugins. Okay, well, how do I get... Hmm, that is weird. How do I get rid of that message? Okay, I just restart the... That was weird. I don't know why it did that the first time, but if I search for Discord, which I know is available on Flathub, right? Discord, yeah, nothing is returned. So I wonder if I go into software repositories, is there a nice graphical way where I can just tick on Flathub, or do I have to do this at the command line? I mean, I don't mind opening a terminal and you know adding something at the command line, but it'd be nice if they didn't make especially newer to Linux users do this. So we have the uh, RPM Fusion stuff enabled. We have this firmware update. And uh, this is interesting because the firmware update uh, repository of software, some people, their equipment will have uh, available updates for the firmware on their hardware. So that's something that typically you want to make sure you have enabled, even if you end up don't needing it because some people won't need it for their hardware but typically you want to have that enabled just in case looks like google chrome a repository to get the chrome browser is enabled if you need that and fedora flathub it does look like flathub is turned on but yeah it didn't uh it didn't find discord maybe maybe i need to search for a different program let me search for something else i know that is available on flathub as a flat pack obs OBS is free software, though it should be in the standard repositories. Oddly enough, even OBS in the standard repositories doesn't come up. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not crazy about this, uh, this graphical software center. Let me see. Zoom is proprietary software. Would, would I find Zoom? Ah, the problem is it's trying to give me hints. And then I guess I have to hit enter to... I, I don't know, because Discord... Discord's still not there, even when I hit enter, but Zoom was. Maybe Z maybe Discord is not available on Plato. It, that could be the case, but Zoom apparently is, unless it's in the standard repositories. No, it's going to install Zoom as a flat pack from Flathub. So Flathub is enabled. I just need to search for something that's actually there on Flathub because apparently Discord isn't. I really like the default Fedora wallpaper here. Let me move my head. You can actually see it is branded with the Fedora logo here at the bottom. Let me go ahead and right click on the desktop. Let's change desktop background. Let's see what other wallpapers are available. So we should have the standard GNOME 43 wallpaper pack. And one thing about GNOME, you have the default uh, 
theme settings, which is a mixture of light and dark theme. So you're going to have your light windows with the dark uh, panel at the top, the default um, dark GNOME shell theme. I like dark, dark, right? Where everything is dark. So I'm going to choose a proper dark theme. And then we need to choose a, a wallpaper to go with the dark theme. And this is, I believe, the standard, like the default for GNOME 43 is this uh, blue and purple. So what the blue would be, blue would be the uh, wallpaper for the light theme, right? <laughs> if I go to the dark theme, the purple wallpaper. So that's the split wallpapers here. So if you change between a light theme and a dark theme, you get a different wallpaper because typically if you have a light wallpaper, it looks best against a dark theme. If you have a dark wallpaper, it looks best against a light theme. And it looks like, other than the standard GNOME wallpaper pack, I've seen all of these before, there's really nothing nothing to see here other than, again, the uh, the artwork here that came with Fedora. The, so the light wallpaper was the default. I go to the dark theme, you have a darker version of this wallpaper, and I actually like that. Yeah, I, I think this is a very attractive, very sexy GNOME desktop. Now, typically for my taste, I'm going to install probably four or five GNOME extensions to get me uh, the standard uh, like dash to dock or dash to panel because I like having a normal kind of panel with a normal kind of start menu. You know, I'm not a big fan of the, the GNOME workflow out of the box, but I can use it. Uh, I did a video actually uh, just a couple of weeks back of some of my favorite GNOME extensions that I like to install if I have to live in GNOME. So guys, check out that video if you're a GNOME user. One thing I should check out before I go is I should open a terminal and we should check out system resource usage. So let me fire up HTOP. HTOP is not installed. So let's do a sudo dnf install HTOP. And yes, actually install it. I really hate the confirmation about installing a program. Like if I do a sudo dnf install htop, you don't have to ask me after that, do you really want to install it? <laughs> well, I wouldn't have typed sudo dnf install htop if I didn't really want to install it. That's, again, strange choices uh, for Fedora. There, there's a lot of uh, directions they go that I find a little odd. But system resource usage, right now I'm using 1.8 gigs of RAM out of the 6 gigs of RAM I gave this virtual machine. The GNOME desktop has never been slim it's never been lightweight right it's it's always been kind of a hog especially a ram hog and 1.8 gigs of six gigs of ram that's that's insanely high um but it is what it is i i don't want to throw too much shade on gnome i know a lot of people really love this desktop environment and i've got to say it has grown on me a little bit here in the last year or two Overall, I think Fedora 37 is a solid release. I think those of you that are Fedora fans and you love Fedora, you're going to be uh, just ecstatic about this release of Fedora, mainly because of GNOME 43. Now, who is Fedora for as far as a Linux desktop user who typically uses Fedora? Because it's not, again, that popular amongst the... Um, you know, standard desktop Linux crowd, right? Most of the Linux community, they typically gravitate toward Debian-based systems or Arch Linux-based systems here in recent years as far as their desktop computing. You know, Fedora is a Red Hat project. Well, technically, Fedora is a community distribution, but its main sponsor is Red Hat. Red Hat steers development of Fedora. Uh, Fedora and Red Hat, they're kind of like sister distributions. Actually, Fedora is the upstream of Red Hat. So there, there's a lot of Red Hat stuff in Fedora and vice versa. And because of that, I, I think a lot of the people that love Fedora are typically people that work with servers, uh, server admins, IT people, people that work with Red Hat Linux at, on a professional level, they will typically install Fedora on their personal machines just to be in that Red Hat ecosystem. So I think that is a definite use case. Another good use case for installing Fedora is if you want something that has a little bit more up-to-date software. Fedora, even though it's not a rolling release, it is a little more bleeding edge. So this latest release of Fedora has all the latest and greatest packages and kernels and browsers and everything. Everything's going to be on the absolute latest version. So it's a little more bleeding edge, but it's not so bleeding edge. It's not rolling. It's not Arch, right? It's not Gen 2. It's not like that. So if you want some kind of balance between rock solid, stable, old and crusty like Debian, right? But you don't want to go to the extreme of Arch Linux. You want something 
in the middle. I think Fedora is the sweet spot. It's the middle ground. I do want to congratulate everybody that worked on this release of Fedora. Job well done. Before I go, I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Gabe, James, Matt, Max, and Mimit, Mitchell, Paul West, Why You Bald, Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander Angry, Dayokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nate, Erjan, Alexander, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Because I don't have any corporate sponsors, I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you want more videos about Linux and free and open source, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Vim and HTOP really should be default applications. I need to file a bug report.